Wiring a house is technical. If it's done improperly, it could be a hazard to occupants of the house from electrical shock or even fire. We recommend that you hire a professional for this step of the operation. If you choose to do it yourself, make sure you do the proper research and have a professional review your work before you close up the walls. Even though we recommend that you hire a professional for your electrical work, it's still a good idea to familiarize yourself with the different terminology and the different options available to you. One of the things that you'll need in your electrical system are switches. There's several different kinds. This one happens to be a single pole switch, which means it will control one light from one location. This is a double pole switch, also called a three-way and it will control a set of lights from two different locations. For example, you might want one up in your loft and down below to control your loft lights. So you can turn the lights on before you crawl into bed and turn them off without having to get down the ladder again. You also have options for your receptacles. There are some that have a built-in circuit to protect you from electrocution. These are usually used in wet locations. They're referred to as GFCI. They'll have a reset and a button and usually a little light on it to tell you that it's working properly. Another feature to some of the modern receptacles is what's called tamper-proof. They will have a little window that closes the entrance so that you can't inadvertently stick a paper clip or something in there if you, try, if you tried. Now GFCI, the abbreviation for that stands for Ground Fault Circuit Interrupter. And what it does is it basically breaks the circuit if there's a surge in the power. And a surge would come if, say, it connected with something that conducted electricity really well, like a paper clip connected to a human body or a bathtub full of water. And the standard type wouldn't do that. I think I felt the surge in that one right there. <laughs> no, a standard type would not break the circuit. And it is important that you follow local code in terms of the tamper resistant. Some municipalities have adopted that code and some have not yet. So make sure you check with your local officials. Now this is an innovative newcomer to the outlet field in that it has USB ports built into it. So I can charge my phone. Absolutely, this would be quite handy over a desk. You still have a 110 volt receptacle, but you've got two USB ports. You could charge your phone, your iPad, whatever, whatever uses that type of charging system. I think I might put this in my house. Very convenient. 
Another safety feature that's been built into our electrical systems in today's world is a circuit breaker. And a circuit breaker such as this one is a standard feature that allows the electricity to be cut to the line. Now this box happens to have two different circuits in the same slot. That allows you to expand your circuits a little bit in the box. And this is a standard breaker, meaning that the only thing that will trip it is if you exceed the amperage that it's rated for, which might be quite a shock before it kicks that breaker. But if an appliance was to fail, it's going to trip the breaker. Another way that circuit breakers protect us is by using GFCIs. Now, you might remember that we talked about a GFCI outlet, but this is another way that you can create that same protection through a string of circuits. And this one happens to have a special little ground connector here. Your electrician will know how to install this properly, but you might want to talk to him about the cost benefits of purchasing individual GFCI outlets versus a breaker that's a little more expensive but it's going to protect the entire line. Another type of breaker is the arc fault circuit interrupter. This is a recent innovation in code and your local municipality might require that you have this in your home. Basically, an arc fault interrupter will cut off power if there is an arc between an, a faulty connection in your circuit. This is one of the leading causes of house fires in the electrical system is by creating when there's arcs jumping from line to line. Right, and that's two different purposes for those breakers. The arc fault would not protect you in a wet area and the GFCI would not necessarily prevent a fire started from an arc. So know what to talk to your electrician about, know what the code is in your area, that will help you get the, the wiring job and the features that you want in your electricity. For more information, you can visit us at tumbleweedhouses.com, and it's a good idea to find the website for your local city, where you can find published online the codes for your area.